Hey everybody, uh, I am calling this the last week best week. Um, we um, have come down to the end and we just need to finish off our conversations with supply and demand uh, regarding supply shifts. I will say the one unit that we did not get to was personal finance. And um, I like to say everything's my favorite and it is, uh, but I'm very bummed that we don't get to end with personal finance because that's usually kids' favorite. Uh, I decided to leave it out because there is a personal finance class that will be offered to you all as an elective. So I highly encourage you to take that class before you graduate. It will be, I can promise you, one of the most practical classes that you'll take in high school. Um, we'll talk about credit and loans, banking. You didn't get to do the stock market challenge, and so we will absolutely do the stock market challenge um, in that class. We will do budgeting, we'll learn about taxes, um, everything that will be relevant to you coming up. So um, strongly encourage you to take that class before you graduate. Okay, so back to supply and demand. We talked about demand shifts last week, and now this week it's time to talk about what causes shifts in demand. So price changes things, but we know that all things do not remain constant. So we see that Latin word again, seridus paribus, which means all other things held constant. Um, so we're going to talk about these rules with supply shifts, assuming that other things remain constant except for those events that might change supply. This has been incredibly relevant with COVID-19. Um, last week, I did ask you um, in the Ed Puzzle what your thoughts were about the testing for COVID-19 being regulated by the government. Many of you um, had responses that were spot on. I could tell that you understood the difference between a free market and government intervening. Remember that in a free market, that allows the laws of supply and demand to work. So if this is an item that's in really hot demand and causes that demand curve to shift to the right, prices could be really high. And if supply, we'll learn, is really low, that could cause prices to shoot up any more, even more. And so that could mean that testing could go into the thousands of dollars. So only people who could afford it would get tested if it was offered on the free market maybe, possibly, right? So here's a quote that I found that I just wanted you to keep in mind, that you don't want people who should go and seek care to not go because they're concerned about costs. If somebody is sick, they should interact with the medical system. And this was the vice president and director of global health and HIV policy. Um, so just something to think about when it comes to government regulation, that there are times in the marketplace that it makes sense, very much like organ donors or maybe even if your, your house is on fire or something. Here were the shifters that we talked about last week with demand, taste and preferences, number of consumers, the price of related goods, both substitutes and complements, our income, and then consumer expectations. So here we go. I'm going to ask you this question to just compare what the difference is between these two graphs. So when you look at them, graph number one shows the arrow just moving down. Graph number two shows the arrow moving to the right. Explain that difference. Hopefully you said something like in the graph number one, the change has to do with price. In graph number two, the change has to do with a non-price factor. So because of those non-price factors, shift happens, and it happens with supply as well. So in graph number one, this is all things remain constant, and there's just a change in price. Arrow showing it goes down. It could also go up as well. Graph number two, this week we show a shift in supply. So increase in supply is a shift to the right, because remember our quantities go up. Um, as we go from left to right. So a shift to the right is an increase in quantity like this one shows right here for the market of milk. Um, if it shifted to the left, that would be a decrease in supply. So here it is again. Shift to the right is an increase. Shift to the left is a decrease. So here's our supply shifters or our determinants for supply. The price of resources, the number of producers, technology, government intervention, and expectations. So the, let's go to the government interventions. Taxes are something that the government could impose. So taxes will increase production costs. A subsidy is like a grant that the government gives to help an industry. We saw this with the wind um, in the energy field with the wind powers. So government payments that support a business or market, typically that will increase supply. 
or there might be some new regulations, and those regulations, depending on the law, could help an industry or hurt it. Typically, if it's a stricter restriction or regulation, it will decrease supply. All right, so let's take a look. When there's an increase to the right in supply, we have a new equilibrium price. So right here, equilibrium price is this green dot at 120. When we increase supply, so it's more readily available, there's a condition that increases supply at all price points, the equilibrium price will drop to 80 cents. So a shift to the right means a new equal equilibrium price has dropped while the quantity supplied has increased. Here's what causes an increase in supply. The price of resources. So remember, this is the, the cost of making a product. So it gets less expensive to make the product. We're going to see an increase in supply. So perhaps I have um, t-shirts. Maybe cot cotton prices go down and get cheap. Well, you might see an increase in supply of t-shirts because the resource of cotton became cheaper. Next one is number of producers. More people are producing and making it. That will increase supply. Technology. As technology gets better and advances, we can produce goods and service or goods quicker, and so we might see an increase in supply. With government intervention, if taxes are decreased, we could see an increase in supply. Subsidies are provided, or some type of regulation makes it easier to produce that product. Now, expectations is a little bit different here. So expectations is if I expect demand to increase, my supply might increase. Or it could also have to do with prices. And you're going to see this in the video uh, that you watch regarding oil. So expecting prices to decrease in the future will make me supply more right now as a business owner because I want to try to get a high price for it. So my supply will be high right now if prices are expected to drop in the future. All right, now let's take a look at a decrease in supply. This is a shift to the left. So our equilibrium price is it started at 120, but when supply decreased a shift to the left, our equilibrium price went up to 160 because there's not as many available anymore, so I can offer a higher price. So new equilibrium, equilibrium price has increased, and the quantity supplied has decreased right here. So what causes a decrease in supply? Well, when the price of resources get more expensive, that causes a decrease. When there's fewer producers making the product, there's a decrease in supply. Technology is outdated. Perhaps we've seen this with DVDs. So the technology has increased to allow for more online streaming services, and so DVDs have become outdated because of advances in technology. That's where we see a decrease in supply. Government intervention. Taxes are increased, causes a decrease in supply. Or perhaps the regulation makes it harder to produce. One thing I think about is tanning salons or tanning beds. In Iowa, they increase the age that you um, had to be. I think it got increased to 18 to be able to go tan. Well, the supply decrease because of that government regulation. Expectations, expecting demand to decrease. So going back to the tanning salons again, well, they expected demand to decrease too because they thought about all of the teenagers that typically go to tanning salons, um, and that caused it to decrease as well because of that regulation. Or it might have to do with prices. If we expect prices to increase in the future, my supply might be low right now because I'm going to wait and hold off and offer that product when prices are higher. Okay, here's a review question. What happens to supply when the price increases? And look, I give you the answer. The answer is nothing will happen. There's no shift when the price changes first. Remember, the shifts happen only when there's a non-price factor. So supply will stay the same, the quantity supply that will increase. And again, if we were in class together, we would do all kinds of activities to practice this. So um, maybe you're getting off the hook. I don't know. All right, here are some questions that I'm going to ask you, though, um, to try to practice. So first one is your demand. I'm sorry, not demand. This is supply. So the market for skinny jeans now. 
So denim fabric prices are skyrocketed. This has to do with the supply shift or price of resources. What will happen to the supply of skinny jeans? It will decrease because denim just got more expensive. So they're more expensive to produce skinny jeans. All right, next one, Xbox. So more and more companies start to produce game systems. What will happen to the supply for Xbox? Increase because of the number of producers. Next market is corn. Technology advancements in harvesting corn occur. What will happen to the supply? I hope you said that it would increase. Tanning salons. I already talked about this one, so hopefully you get this one right. Government places age restrictions on tanning salons. What will happen to supply? It will decrease. Wind energy. Government provides a subsidy to wind farmers. Supply will increase because a subsidy is like giving money to that industry. All right, soybeans. Analysts state that the price of soybeans is expected to increase. What will happen? This one, you got it right if you said decrease or increase, because if they expect prices to increase in the future, supply will go down right now, but in the future, supply will go up when those prices are high. All right, cigarettes. What will happen to supply for cigarettes if the government places an excise tax on the sale of alcohol and tobacco? Hopefully you said the supply would decrease. Okay, your next assignment for this week, um, I changed it up a little bit from what I said I was going to do. You just have one more Ed Puzzle. It's a short one, and it's just going to give you some background knowledge on the crude oil market and what's happening. I think this is really relevant to all of you as 16-year-olds that are driving a lot, is watch the prices at the gas pump, and why do you see those fluctuate? So this will help you give you an understanding um, of those gas prices, and I, so I want you to see that. So what they're going to talk about um, is that we saw a significant decrease in demand. So if this was the market for oil and we saw a decrease in demand, that would be a shift to the left for demand. So it would go from perhaps here to here, right? So perhaps an equilibrium price of $30 a barrel down to maybe $25 a barrel. Well, when demand started to decrease, and we saw prices go way down, the, the global organizations got together and said, we need to also then decrease our supply to try to help out those prices. So I'm gonna show a decrease in supply on this graph now. So what they're trying to do is get those prices back up to here. So now, label this one as S2. So it goes from here to here. So, so when they, prices decrease because of the decrease in demand, they tried to also decrease their supply to get the prices back up. But what happened was those drops were so significant, like down here like this, that this decreases in supply really haven't done much. So that's what the Ed Puzzle is going to talk about um, as your next assignment. I already talked a little bit about personal finance, but again, want to encourage you to sign up for that course. And finally, I want to wish you all a wonderful summer, no matter what it looks like, and just reinforce that I really miss seeing you all in class. Please know that you always have an advocate in me, and so stop in and say hi um, when I see you in the hallways in the fall, because I miss um, having a formal goodbye. Take care, Econ. We'll see you next time.